The ceramic is almost destroyed. Time of the hour, find out if there is penetration or not. Guys, we just arrived in Tula. This is actually a gunsmith city. And this is the second time I'm visiting a gunsmith city in Russia. The first being Izhevsk, where they have Kalashnikov. Don't forget to check out that video. We tested the AK in its birthplace, made by the same people that have been making it for the last, I don't know, 80 years. That's a very good video. The link is gonna be in the description below. This time we're visiting Rostec, one of its subsidiaries in Tula. They make one of the best ceramic body armor there is, and we're gonna be testing it out thoroughly in the field and let's see let's see how it goes but we have to find a way to get there Tula is a very nice town because I mean it's just two hours away from Moscow just smaller less expensive version of Moscow. Uh, people are very nice, very hospitable. They have something called Tulski Prianiki, which is gingerbread from Tula. And there's a very nice anecdote about Tula. Uh, it's that during the Second World War, they also made Tulski Prianiki, but that was code for mines because they, uh, they were shaped a bit similar. That's what I understood. Uh, but it's a very, important gunsmith city ever since the Russian Empire. It's a beautiful city actually. The architecture reminds me of a combination of Russian, old Russian and Soviet architecture. And let's look at those beautiful churches over there. That's the central square, Lenin, the flag and a very beautiful golden dome church. Yeah, let's go. Nice, quiet, peaceful town. It's got everything you need. People are super nice. They get out of the way when they see you're filming. That is something that I really, really appreciate. Thank you, Tula. I think we're here. Now, I want to thank Rostec for letting me test out so much of their latest equipment, like the BMP3, the T90M main battle tank, and so much more. The videos of these behemoths are gonna be in the description below. Don't forget to check them out. So basically, the Rostec State Corporation is the largest industrial conglomerate in Russia. It was founded in 2007, and it has more than 800 organizations that are spread out across the country. And the most recognizable of them all are the likes of the United Aircraft Company that make all the MiGs and the Sukhois, Russian Helicopters, UEC, Ural Vagon Zavod, Ross Electronics, the Kalashnikov Concern, Kamaz, and so many more. In short, you can say Rostec is involved in aircraft manufacturing, radio electronics, biotech, material sciences, and many other cutting edge industries. One of the main directions of the corporation's work is in R&D, production and modernization of weapons and military equipment. Rostec's lineup is huge, but these include military and civilian aircraft, helicopters and UAVs, aircraft engines, aircraft units, electronics and avionics, armored vehicles, artillery systems, short-range air defense systems, small arms and melee weapons, ammunition, Optomechanical and optoelectronic devices, automated control systems and means of communication, electronic warfare equipment, and much more. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very important video of the gun tour. Here we will be testing Russian made, NATO made, and Chinese made body armor. But I want to tell you this video is being proudly sponsored by yours truly, so you, we need your help. Hit that subscribe and like button, and I'm going to show you how these very, very interesting and important body armors compare with each other. So let's go. Now, all these three plates have BR5 level protection or 
NIJ level 4. That means they can survive a hit from armor piercing rounds 762 by 51 by 54. We're going to be using the Pechenek Russian machine gun to be testing out all of these plates. And let's see which one survives the best. So now just for your perspective, we started out with a steel plate and this, these are not armor piercing rounds and they just went straight through the steel plate. We're going to be testing out the NATO one and let's see how that goes. Well, the armor piercing round just about destroyed it. Now I'm gonna see if it actually went through the NATO armored plate. You can see all the ceramic coming out, but I wanna see if there is penetration or not. Let's take it out. As you can see, the front part off the plate is completely gone. I don't think it can hold any more rounds, but as you can see, there is no penetration. I think the BR-5, the NATO one, holds, even though this bump will cause a lot of internal damage to anyone that's wearing it. But yeah, I mean, what do you expect? It's, it's an armor-piercing round. Now let's see the next armored plate. So upon careful inspection, I found out that the NATO one actually got penetrated a bit. You can see there's a small hole right here. Guys, subscribe to the channel. All the good people are doing it. And don't forget to ring that bell. Ding. The ceramic is almost destroyed. We have to take it out to see if there's any penetration or not. Chinese got destroyed. We can see that there's a clear penetration. The person that was wearing it is dead. Now let's see if the Rostec Russian one survives the test. So this is the Russian one made by Rostec. It's a BR-5 or level four American standard plate. It is supposed to survive a hit, a direct hit from an armor piercing round from a 762 by 54 or a 51 rifle. And let's see how this survives our test. Where's the drill? Let's see how it looks from behind because from the front, it looks like it has been hit pretty hard. I mean, it was an armor piercing round. Let's see, let's take it off. So ladies and gentlemen, the time of the hour to find out if there is penetration or not. And no penetration, it's perfectly sound. Even though there is of course bumps that can harm the soldier, but there is still no penetration. So the Russian one, 
withstood the test of the pitching egg. So we're done with our testing and this was the first steel plate that we shot just for perspective. It's a level 3A NIJ or a BR4 Russian level plate. We shot it with the 762 by 54 non armor piercing rounds and then we shot the Chinese one again with armor piercing rounds. But there was penetration. Then the NATO one but the shot went just a bit low and it's a weak point of of this plate and there was penetration and then finally the Russian one in which we used again the armor piercing rounds by the Pechenegg 762 by 54 rounds and there was no penetration we had three hits in the in the center in the lower part and in the upper part and it survived come on That's the problem of being in, in an active training center. You can't speak. And guys, another thing that I noticed about both the Russian and the NATO plates is that the ceramic is covered by a foam covering or a rubber one. But the Russian one has a Kevlar covering over the front face of the ceramic. And I think that makes a very big difference. But, I mean, the tests spoke for themselves the russian one survived the test 100 percent but ladies and gentlemen that's not it i know you're watching this video doing something else on the side don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like this video we've got a lot of interesting stuff coming up for you if you want to see how we went to the other city of izhevsk which is also another gunsmith city we tested out the kalashnikov ak203 it was an amazing video don't forget to check it out it's gonna be in the description below and i will see you next time